then he got into the situation where he suddenly decided he was making friends with Kim. And that became something of an issue out there because the American players who travelled have been persuaded to travel on the basis that they were opening up relationships with North Korea. Rodman was determined to turn it into a big party for his friend, which culminated on the day in the stadium with absolutely cringe-inducing bit where he sang happy birthday to Kim. Let's have a look. See, the difficulty with something like that is that, as, as comic at all as it may be, the truth is you've just talked about concentration camps, you've just mm. talked about starvation, and you're talking about a, a, almost a Hitler-like figure, and everyone terrified and clapping, uh, and him singing happy birthday. Not, it's, it's, it's kind of ludicrous and macabre. It is, but it's not, they're not necessarily terrified. This is the thing as well, watching them, because they're there's a whole... They're brainwashed at yeah, this stage. I mean, you're talking about 70 years with this family having been in control of the country. And they have been forced to regard it almost like, not a royal family, but almost like religious icons. Yes. And the joy, I mean, yeah, that's the way they described They were ecstatic see, yeah, yeah, when yeah. they saw Kim come in. Yeah. I had a minder who, when I was there, whenever I left my room, was practically by my side most of the time. And she was overjoyed to have been so close to Kim because of the yeah. fact that she was sitting with me and was thanking me for having come into the country because it gave her the opportunity to be so close to a leader who she said, they sang a song at the end when he left, which actually in retrospect was probably like a hymn. Yeah. And it basically is said is we will always love you, you will forever in our heart because you are our life, you make us live. Yeah.